Now, us motor caravanners don't let a little bit of bad weather dampen our enthusiasm. No siree. Coming up on this week's show, we have a cracking selection of van and site reviews, plus friendly technical advice from our expert Diamond Dave. All in all, it's a one-stop shop for getting the most out of your motor caravan. So let's have a look at what's coming up in this episode. Now, we're all familiar with the phrase, a rising tide lifts all boats. And it's fair to say that a fair few technical innovations of Formula One racing cars have found their way into high street dealerships. And it's a similar story in the world of motorhomes. You see, Heimer's B-Class Dynamic Line has a range of technical smarts and design innovations that now appear in the Exis range for 2018. And fortunately, some of these are on the outside of the vehicle. Just check out these hybrid LED light clusters, very automotive and some clever thinking too. And what's more, they really look the part. And this reversing camera is very snazzy indeed. It has a twin lens and also acts as a permanently on rear view camera. So very good for safety. And what's more, it has a special LED diode to ensure that the vision is just as good at nighttime. But it's not the only external camera on this vehicle, no siree. Here on the underbody, there's a handy camera near the wastewater disposal point. All you need to do now is drive over the grate in the floor and you can dump your tanks with the confidence that you're hitting the right place. Now the electrical system is handily located in one place. You can see there are a pair of leisure batteries. The second one is a cost option. Normally it comes with one. What it does have a standard though is an energy management system. So the vehicle detects the power uses and switches between the starter battery and the leisure battery. So you never need to run your levels down. Now another item that's pleasingly standard kit are the headlights at the front. They use LED fiber optic technology for maximum visibility when on the road. They were developed in conjunction with Heller and they are another borrow from the Heimer B-Class Dynamic line. So what's so good about them you may ask? Well, they have daytime running lights and indicators incorporated into the design. A very elegant solution. Now, a couple of other things to note while we're on the outside of the vehicle. This is an XSI, so it's a 2.22 meter wide A-Class, the narrowest A-Class that Heimer produces. So it's perfect for a bit of urban jousting alongside spearing along a motorway. Now, you can also have the low profile variant, which is the Exis T, but this is a pretty fine thing as it is. So let's get aboard and have a look at some of the other technical innovations on this model, which is the 474. But before that, let's just note that this fetching metallic silver body color is a 2,600 pound optional extra. Now the 474 is a four berth with fixed twin single beds at the rear and another drop down bed up here in the lounge. This L shaped seating group is very sociable indeed and you really don't get the feeling that this van is 2.22 meters wide. Thanks in no small part I suspect to three things. The Pico soft furnishings, the Chiavenna walnut woodwork and the skylight right up there above the kitchen. Now this isn't the biggest kitchen you'll ever see in a motorhome, but it's got a lot going for it design-wise. Let's start up here with this single piece overhead locker. This is to save weight and looks very ergonomic too, and plenty of places to stash food inside. Down here, specifically for the UK market, we have the separate oven and grill. That is an optional extra, not coming as standard. Next to that, we have these soft closing drawers with these rather natty handles. All very good indeed. Now the sink isn't very big, but it does have a smart monoblock tap and a cover, obviously. Next to that is a little cage on the wall where you can keep your washing up brush. Now I know what you're thinking. There isn't masses of preparation space in this kitchen. Well, you can extend the table bit at the end by pulling up this hinged flap. Plus behind in the donette, you've also got a much larger area too. So as long as no one in this area is using the table, then you've got all this added preparation and serving space. And the final piece in the kitchen jigsaw is the Ontren skinny fridge. 
which has a separate freezing compartment and a bottle drawer at the bottom. Cheers! Now the near side washroom is compact but it has some very clever thinking inside. Just look at all those spaces where there's wood. You're probably thinking if you fire up the shower it's going to get quite wet but Heimer has an ingenious solution. You release this catch here at the bottom and you pull away the vanity unit like this and behind it is another little flap that you can pull across. All you need to do then, and obviously you'll be inside the shower at this point, is to slide the door open. And that way you can create two discrete zones. Surely there can't be a better way of keeping spray at bay. Now a Heimer bedroom is a comfortable place to be and the 474's execution proves there's a lot of life left in that adage. It has the fixed twin single beds that you can make into a rather large double. Illumination is fantastic. Ambient lighting here, a large window at the side and up above in the centre of the bedroom. Now also another feature I've noticed is the fact that you've got these really cool coil springs which together with the cold foam mattresses make for a very comfortable night's sleep indeed. More great technological innovation from Heimer. Now there's great storage in the bedroom too. How about this on the offside, a rather large wardrobe. And opposite that is a handy cupboard which like the wardrobe is illuminated. Now the rear garage has a pair of large doors so loading is very easy indeed. And while we're here let's just note something about the weight and payload. The van has a payload of 710 kilograms. If you take off the driver, the passenger, a full tank of water and two gas bottles it leaves you with 450 kilograms. And amazingly you can put 350 kilograms of that payload right in here in the rear garage. Now the external cameras we mentioned earlier are part of an added extra system that costs £2,590 and which feeds into this rather attractive head unit here. It has radio, satellite navigation and Bluetooth connectivity for phones and tablets. And in case you're wondering, in the real world you would obviously pull that sticker off. The Heimer XSI 474 starts from £66,130 on the road. It's based on the Fiat Ducato with an Alco chassis of 3,500 kilograms, so anyone can drive it on a standard car license. Now some of you will be thinking that £66,000 is a lot of money, but with Heimer the quality is inbuilt and you get what you pay for. They're pretty bomb proof too. Plus there's the fact that the Heimer B-Class Dynamic line, lots of these tech smarts and innovations are appearing in the Exis range for the first time. So if you're not persuaded by the relative merits of an A-Class, you could also buy a low profile and save yourself some cash. So one excellent van, two different price points. What's not to like about that? Hello there, I'm just doing a bit of tweaking to the map on the race car. Got a computer here connected to it, just adjusting the fuel in a bit. This is not dissimilar to having your motorhome remapped, except obviously this one's a petrol, but very similar for modern diesels. The fueling data is stored in an array called a map, um, which balances load against engine speed, and then the ECU will know how much fuel to inject and when uh, to give you the right power. Let's go and have a look how that affects a motorhome. So this is a typical piece of equipment that would be used for remapping. This is a, just an ordinary laptop computer. That plugs into the OBD port of the vehicle and from there the map, the fueling map can be altered. Now a diesel map in modern vehicles is much more complex than the petrol engine we looked at on the race car. On a diesel engine these days they're doing multiple injection strokes per firing stroke per cylinder, all individually timed and measured. So by altering the amount of fuel that's injected, we can increase the performance of the engine. So we get more torque, more power from it. If you use that extra torque for acceleration, then you are likely to use more fuel. But if you drive normally, just as you did before you had the remap, there's a very good chance you'll get better fuel consumption. So remapping is a good option. It doesn't come without risk, obviously, the likes of Fiat, Ford, Mercedes, spend millions of pounds developing their vehicles 
and developing the fuel in map to go with it to give correct emissions and the appropriate acceleration figures, brake horsepower, torque, etc. Can somebody with a laptop computer write a better map? I don't know. Some of the parameters may be exceeded on the emissions, I don't know. But it can certainly make the vehicle more drivable. Some of the risks with remapping would be perhaps your clutch might not last as long. Now that's something worth bearing in mind because a clutch on something like this is going to cost 700 to 1,000 pounds to have replaced. So if having it remapped and using that extra torque is going to signal the early demise of your clutch, something to think about. There is an alternative to a full remap and that would be to use a device like this, a tuning box. This simply plugs into the fuel rail pressure sensor and sits in between the pressure sensor and the ECU and changes the readings that the ECU sees from the rail pressure sensor. If the ECU thinks the fuel rail pressure is lower than it really is, it will increase it. Higher fuel pressure for the same injection durations will give more fuel injected. Now I know what you're thinking, that's going to use more fuel. Well the reality is it might do, again, if you use the extra torque that it gives you for faster acceleration, then yes, you probably are going to use more fuel. But if you drive normally, the same way that you did before the tuning box was added, then you will quite probably see an improvement in fuel consumption. I've noticed an improvement with the use of this box. It's gone, my fuel consumption has gone up from about 29 miles to gallon to about 32. So that's a three miles per gallon improvement. Not to be sniffed at. Again, there are potential problems with fitting a tuning box. If you're increasing the performance of the engine, the drivetrain potentially is going to be under more strain, the clutch may fail earlier, but that can be controlled by you, the driver. Take the lead out of your boot, back off a bit. Simple as that, really. And that will give you better fuel consumption as well. So those are a few options on how to get more performance and hopefully better fuel consumption out of your vehicle. Just bear in mind that there are potential downsides to it. Hope you found this helpful. See you next time. Just six miles from the border with Mid Wales lies Arrowbank Country Holiday Park, part of a family-run group of six sites that are all based along the Welsh border. It's a well-run, friendly site with an impressive reception and a loyal customer base. Generally we find we attract uh, mature couples, retired or semi-retired, but also young families as well, as well that have been coming over the years. And they're here, they want to get away from their busy lives and the hustle and bustle. It's very traffic free, it's a very relaxed area. The local village is great because we act as a little community, so we support all the facilities there. So they get a very genuine, warm welcome when they go into the village as well. So the whole package is, is relaxing for them. The village is very much part of the experience at Arabank. Rather than have a shop on site, here they prefer to support the local community-backed store, where local residents take turns to run the shop rather than giving in to big business. Back on the site, there's plenty to tempt the ardent tourer with generous sized pitches and limited but great quality facilities. On our super pitches, our fully serviced pitches, we have electric hookup, water hookup, grey waste hookup, and also TV aerial hookup. They're all very generous in size. We can accommodate the biggest holiday homes and caravans without any problem, and there's very good access on and off the park. Um, and then we have 30 of those plots, and then we have another nine gravel plots just with electric hookup. As befits a holiday park in our Top 100 Sites Guide, the toilet facilities are absolutely sparkling. And there are also disabled washrooms and a baby changing area. But it's the laundrette that holds the biggest surprise. As well as a washing up area, a washer and dryer and a microwave, this room boasts a small book and DVD library and one other very special feature. In our laundry room, we also have a big focus on the local nature. We have a nature watch board so people with and they spot wildlife can record it so other people can come in and, and see if they can spot it as well. 
Uh, we're very lucky we have many, many species of birds, foxes, we even occasionally have otters on the river. Uh, so we're really trying to encourage everyone to get involved, get a record of, of the wildlife. It all links in very nicely to the David Bellamy Awards. Um, and since we've been doing that, we, it just brings it to the fore and people appreciate it more because they're able to know the areas to go to to see particular wildlife. Not quite so wild, but equally important, is the fact that dogs are more than welcome on the site. There's a dedicated field to let them off the lead, as well as miles of country walks for them to explore. It's absolutely fabulous, particularly for the dog. We can walk her for miles and we'll still come back and she wants to go to the dog area. So to us, that's just fabulous and we lead very busy lives. And it's nice to be able to come here and just be at one and be able to take the dog anywhere. A lot of places don't have, have walks where you can actually let the dog off. But there are, uh, as Dolores said, they've cut areas around the big fields so you can actually walk around with your dog on a lead. Yeah, so you're, they aren't free running. And yeah, they actually cater for dog owners. And there's quite a few of us yeah, who do uh, visit the site. Yeah. Unsurprisingly, they also cater for fishermen here at Arrowbank, with fishing rights for the River Axe as it winds through the park. Apparently, it's a great spot for brown trout and chub. Getting off the site is simple, with a bus stop outside that visits most of the local villagers, with access to Hereford about 40 minutes away. Also close by is Westbury Mill Water Gardens, well worth a visit with its plant sales and cafe. The thousand-year-old Croft Castle is just over eight miles away, with regular exhibitions and plenty to see. But for the more adventurous, there's Oakwood Leisure Park Activity Centre, with everything from paintballing to quad bike trekking. And for something a little more sedate, what about a stroll around Pembridge, one of the many beautiful black and white Tudor style villages in the area? It's the first time we've been and uh, it's super, isn't it? Yeah, it's our first ever trip in a caravan all motor home and uh, I think we've, we've uh, hit a hot, you know, gold standard straight away. It's, uh, we've They've been, been a... spoilt now. It's, it's all very compact, everything is close by and within a couple of minutes walk. And, and that's what we like, isn't it? Yeah. We've been to a lot of different sites over the years, and this is our favourite, which is why we, we come here so often. Our readers commented on the fact that the pitches are all well spaced and nice and level. So if you find yourself in the Hereford area and are looking for a quality campsite for the weekend or the week, Arrowbank Country Holiday Park is definitely worth a look. Half an hour later and it's still raining. And sadly, that's all we've got time for on this show. We'll be back again soon with some more cracking van and site reviews, plus technical advice from our expert Diamond Dave. In the meantime, you can keep in touch with us via our website, Facebook or Twitter. Until next time then, tour safe and take care.